One thing that keeps me puzzled, despite having studied finance and economics at the world's best universities, the following question remains unanswered. Why is it that 5,000 units of our currency is worth one unit of your currency, where we are the ones with the actual gold reserves? It's quite evident that the aid is in fact not coming from the West to Africa, but from Africa to the Western world. The Western world depends on Africa in every possible way, since alternative resources are scarce out here. So how does the West ensure that the free aid keeps coming? By systematically destabilizing the wealthiest African nations and their systems, and all that backed by huge PR campaigns. Leaving the entire world under the impression that Africa is poor and dying, and merely surviving on the mercy of the West. Well done, Oxfam, UNICEF, Red Cross, Life Aid, and all the other organizations that continuously run multi-million dollar advertisement campaigns depicting charity porn to sustain that image of Africa globally. Ad campaigns paid for by innocent people under the impression to help with their donations. While one hand gives under the flashing lights of cameras, the other takes in the shadows. We all know the dollar is worthless, while the euro is merely charged with German intellect and technology, and maybe some Italian pasta. How can one expect donations from nations that have so little? It's super sweet of you to come with your colored paper in exchange for our golden diamonds. But instead, you should come empty-handed, filled with integrity and honor. We want to share with you our wealth and invite you to share with us. The perception is that a healthy and striving Africa would not disperse its resources as freely and cheaply, which is logical. Of course, it would instead sell its resources at world market prices, which in turn would destabilize and weaken Western economies, established on the post-colonial free meal system. Last year, the IMF reports that six out of ten of the world's fastest growing economies are in Africa, measured by their GDP growth. The French Treasury, for example, is receiving about $500 billion year in, year out, in foreign exchange reserves from African countries based on colonial debt they forced them to pay. Former French President Jacques Chirac stated in an interview recently that we have to be honest and acknowledge that a big part of the money in our banks comes precisely from the exploitation of the African continent. In 2008, he stated that without Africa, France will slide down in the rank of a third world power. This is what happens in the human world the world we have created. Have you ever wondered how things work in nature? One would assume that in evolution... It's not a coffin he's being measured for. This is an urgent effort to keep him from the grave. His arms so thin for his age and height, he's categorized as severely, acutely malnourished. Abolo needs urgent help. He's about two, and he can't walk. He's one of six million kids across the Horn of Africa. The UN says are on the brink of starvation. There's food for her youngest, but nothing for a Kurgok's other children, except for a little wheat ground into a handful of flour. She says her husband died last year. She's no livestock. She survives by selling charcoal where she can. But food prices have trebled this year. The evidence that humanity's ancestors lived here one and a half million years ago has been found in places like this. 
Now water, the very source of life, is being measured out in coffee cups. And 11.6 million people across northeastern Africa are short of water in the worst drought for 40 years. Here in Illoret, northern Kenya, local officials say that at least 85% of animals once owned by nomadic people are dead. And the UN says one and a half million head of livestock have perished in Kenya. And across the Horn of Africa, close to 20 million people face acute food shortages. Now, the price of stable food like maize flour have more than doubled in many parts of Kenya since the disruption of global food supplies by Russia's invasion of Ukraine. In short, Europe's war may soon start killing people in Africa. This community is marginal. It's living on the brink, the very brink, of survival. But so are millions of people right across the region. And critical to their long-term survival is the stability of Kenya, a country that is facing drought. It is facing massive increases in the price of fuel and food, and it's now facing general elections. Instability here causes chaos across the whole Horn of Africa. The increased banditry across the vast Marsabit County has led to dozens of murders and thousands of livestock lost in raids and has now been met with military operations and a dawn to dusk curfew. Around 200 machine guns and other weapons were captured in one recent police operation here, along with hundreds of rounds of ammunition. Roadblocks screen travellers in daylight. Nomads are moving south in search of grazing into major towns like Isiolo and they've invaded wildlife sanctuaries like Buffalo Springs, competing with protected and often endangered animals for food and water. The results can be fatal. Two men were recently killed by a female elephant near here. But it's violence between humans that's putting the most traditionally stable country in the Horn of Africa at risk. Anytime you get, um, uh, you get people that are hungry um, without other options, uh, you've got a security situation and uh, northern Kenya is, you know, we're bordered by uh, South Sudan, Ethiopia, Somalia, uh, all of which have had or are, 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 are still in the grip of conflict that spews small arms into this ecosystem. So you've got a lot of weapons up here uh, and increasing hunger. So, yeah, I'd say that's a security concern. That concern will endure as long as this landscape continues to dry out and war in Europe chokes food supplies to Africa's most needy. Sam Kiley, CNN, in Illoret, Northern Kenya.